I dream for all of us to own wardrobes with garments made from sustainable sources, including fair wages for the makers. I aim to motivate and inspire viewers to see the clothes they wear as an expression of their personality and their beliefs. This is the Slow Wardrobe. Come and have a look. Hello, welcome to the third episode of the Slow Wardrobe podcast. In this episode, we are visiting Tribe Yarns, the new and already very successful yarn shop in Richmond on the outskirts of London, owned by uh, Millie Abrams. I'm interviewing her and asking her about her journey so far, what got her to opening a yarn shop, how are things going and what she's seeing in her future. Plus, we're getting a very juicy look around the shop itself. And uh, I have to give you one warning before you dive in there. The first part of the interview, we're sitting in front of a wall of yarn and there are some uh, flashing little fairy lights in, the, uh, in between the yarns. They're tiny, but just in case you're sensitive to something like that, there are little flashes of light in there, uh, just uh, for the sake of full disclosure and safety, of course. Uh, after the interview and uh, walking around the shop, there's another dress up session with me at the end where I am showing specifically how you can very effectively wear a tail smock and a mini tabard either separately or combination with each other and with other layer cake garments and how to uh, layer things effectively as well as playing with uh, different color palettes and different color families to jazz things up and make them brighter or tone things down and make them more tonal. As always, uh, please give me your feedback if you have any, and I hope you enjoy the show. So hi, Millie. Hello. It's very exciting to be in your shop here. It's beautiful. Thank you. Uh, we're showing off some yarns behind us, so it's a very busy background, but I think it's worth it. Um, lovely to be with you. Thank you. And I think it's already getting close to a year ago that we met each other. Was yeah, it almost. Was it unravel? Uh, well, I, uh, yeah, actually, I think it was, it wasn't actually that long ago because I hadn't decided to open it, that I hadn't even decided on this idea until the beginning of February. So, yeah, maybe unravel. I think it was unravel. In, Feb in February sometime. Yeah. yeah. I remember you coming onto the stand. I think I actually had one of my boys with me. I had Finn with you me. You did, yeah. And you had a chat with him. I did. He's lovely. And um, sold me a wrist ruler. <laughs> did he? Yeah. Ah, good for him. <gasps> yeah. Good boy. And I remember, I think you did tell me at that uh, show already about your plan to open a shop. And I thought, another person who's going to open a shop. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. But then a couple of weeks later, it was Edinburgh Yarn Fest. And there you were again, saying right. exactly the With same my thing. Notepad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. How did you get to the idea of wanting to open a yarn shop? Um, so I have always wanted a yarn shop, but I decided that it would be something that I would do when I was very old and retired and um, had lots of spare money because you know nobody makes money selling yarn. So it would have been one of those things that. Um, kept me busy when I was old and retired so it had always been sort of there and in my head and you know when I have a yarn shop it's going to look a bit like this and I'm going to sell yarns that are a bit like that and um, but then um, so I'm an accountant by trade uh, I've been an accountant for about 20 years and um, last year uh, we had a big hurry we were living in the Caribbean we've been away for a long time we were living in the Caribbean when Hurricane Irma came along and flattened our island um, wow. so um, it's one of those sort of moments where you reevaluate everything and we knew we had to leave um, the country we actually Indy was our son was starting school here in the UK so um, although we said we'd never come back to the UK because there's so many other places to go live in um, we came back here so that we could be closer to him because that was that was the biggest realization of like okay you know we've lost all of our material possessions, everything's gone. Wow, you lost everything. Yeah, we lost wow. all of our stuff. Um, but we didn't lose our friends or our family. So that yeah. was amazing. So, you know, 
the most important thing is that we're we've got each other in. so we came back here and then and you know another thing was I don't want to be an employee anymore I don't I don't mm. want to have another asshole boss in my life I just, just no, doesn't <laughs> yeah been you there. know <laughs> yeah I've been there yeah, I'm not all my bosses have been you know I've had no, some no. really really lovely um, and I had my own accounting company for a while but it's accounting mm. you don't always get to sort of pick and choose who you get to work with so I wanted to do my own thing um so I was sat there one night with Darren going, oh, I don't know what to do. I don't want to be an accountant. But, you know, what else can I do? We've got indie school fees to pay. And it's not like I have a passion or anything. You know, it's not like I, like, <laughs> I wish sitting I had there a knitting. passion. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting there knitting away. Really? And he's just sort of looking at wow. me like, what? what? Yeah. So, yeah. So I'd like, look, I was like, what about if we buy this business or start this business? And all, always it was because I could I could like have like a yarn thing there and I could have a knitting group in those premises in the evenings. And <laughs> he just at one point was just like, Millie, just open a yarn shop. Like, seriously. <laughs> so, yeah, that was that. And and I did mentally talk myself out of it for, for a little while thinking, well, you know, it's irresponsible and. But yeah, I decided that now it's now. You know, you you don't live forever, and yeah. also, but I had a big wake up call. I'm pretty much a, I'm a big adventurer. So this is actually a really big scary adventure for me. Another one. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, so there you were in in February, and then in March again, and we've kind of kept in touch mm -hmm. since then, haven't we? Yeah. And talk about different brands and different things to carry in the shop, which are all. Fabulous. Because yeah, so you were one of the people that I would be like, so I'm thinking about this, and I think about that. What do you think about this? Because you've already been, you know, in the industry. So it was really good for me to sort of speak to you about about your journey and what yeah. you, and learn a lot from people. Because not every yarn shop owner or everyone in the industry was that welcoming. Mm. But there have been lots of really nice people, and it's been really great to be able to sort of say, right, you know, you've done this, you know what you're doing. Yeah. What do you think of this? Yeah, I have found that very, very different uh, to any other industry that I've seen up close. Um, my background was in fashion, and I hated it with a passion, excuse the pun, right from the beginning because of the atmosphere mm. and the all the elbowing and all the meanness and the politics yeah, and whatever. And, yeah. and then I ended up in you know, advertising and marketing of cosmetics and whatever is not much better, of course. So, um, and once I entered this industry, it was completely different. My first customers were my competitors. Mm, right. And that's just the nicest thing yeah. that people say, oh, how exciting you're new and you're here and what are you doing? Oh, and I'm doing this and what? Lovely. Yeah. And the number of barter deals that I've done with people as well, just swapping stuff because you're so enthusiastic about what the other person is Absolutely. doing. Absolutely. Yeah. Which is just so lovely. It it's it's lovely. so different, isn't it? It is. It's great. And and more often than not, everyone that you're coming across is just as passionate and as gaga about this yeah. stuff as you are. So you can like you can just really, yeah, share share that passion. You know, in here, when we get a, a yarn delivery or or any delivery and I've got Karen in here and Nuri and we um like it's like Christmas, like we're, we're jumping up and down yes. on the spot and screaming. And, oh, my God, look at this, look at that. And you yeah. can't, you know, the customers come in and think, whoa. But but most of the customers that come in here completely understand why we're so excited yeah so well, you gotta go yeah like when I was an accountant I think I used to be the only one that would be really excited about a spreadsheet for example but you know you, did, you didn't have the same sort of ah, Christmas yeah. feeling when you got a new you know, passionate about spreadsheets <laughs> <laughs> I am I still am yeah I still love a good yeah, spreadsheet I, 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 I love getting into the numbers when I can get myself mm. into it it's yeah. always there's always such there's a such barrier a to, to get into it yeah. And, you know, VAT returns, for example, once I'm actually doing it, I love it again. And then three months later, it's like, oh, God, yeah. here we go again. Yeah, I know. Well, because and like this was a new experience for me. Is I've, when I've worked in corporate before or been a very specialist accountant. I've got people that will do those things that I'm not doing. So we had a sales department and marketing and, you know, all those things, advertising, PR but in the in this space, I'm doing all of it, everything, and yeah. all of those hats that you have to wear. And actually, they can be really distracting because mm. there's some bits that I really want to do, like you know, right now. There's like really exciting bits, and then that's actually pushed all my. What well, I, I used to love a lot of the admin tasks, but they're yeah. not nearly as fun as some of the other tasks <laughs> now. So yes. yeah, I'm quite far behind on my own 
admin. Luckily, I'm married to an accountant and he's picking up all of the slack. Yay. So, yeah. <laughs> that's lucky. <laughs> Got somebody to push it on to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's been really good. So you were saying, you know, when you were just sat there knitting and considering doing or buying different businesses, how did you get into knitting in the first place? I can't. Somehow I don't associate knitting with, you know, a Caribbean environment right. or whatever so we i grew up here in london right. um we'd only been we've been away for 14 years but only seven of those have been tropical the last seven so i was knit, i've started knitting when i was about six all oh, right so it's been you know 37 years or lifelong it's been. Thing. yeah it's been a really long thing and my mum taught me once uh, like over the summer when i was really quite young and immediately i it became an obsession you know i had to I, ha I had to do it every day for that summer holiday and i remember you know like very quickly surpassing what my mum could teach me but when she she was trying to teach me pearl on day two and I couldn't the only way I could do it was standing up at an ironing board to get my arms in the right place so I sort of stood at the ironing board for eight hours trying to learn to pearl but I loved it it was because I think we get a lot of this as women especially lot of these days where um I always felt quite guilty about just sitting so and I still do I can't mm. just sit like I think it's a word like not not that anyone out there is making me feel bad but I feel like I'm wasting my time and mm. my you know there's not enough hours in the day as it yeah. is I'm just one of those needs to be doing everything right now and knitting I very quickly burn myself out being that way and knitting is a way for me to actually be able to sort of sit in front of a tv or listen to an audiobook and just not feel guilty about it because I'm making something yeah so sort of hand in hand with that was the fact that I've always when I knit I very rarely keep anything that I knit I don't I don't ever really want to I like the process of knitting it and I'll give it away when it's done or I'll rip it back out and make something else mm. so yeah it's really I think knitting serves so many purposes for different people and um, for me it was a way to to be able to be just kinder to myself and sit down and not burn out and I realized that quite young um I'm very academic so it was a way to have little revision breaks and treat myself with a little bit of knitting where I can sit and still and not feel bad about it. But also, I was the eldest um, child in the new generation of kids. So my parents moved to this country from Africa and I was the first sort of child to be born here. So I got lots of hand-me-downs from my aunties who all lived with us at the time that were like at least 20 years old you know Ooh. these hand me down so I yeah. was you know I was in the early 80s and they were giving me their 70s flares to wear and it was like really? yeah, I mean, it sounds <laughs> great now but actually back then it was really, yeah, yeah. yeah not so good so um so and I didn't get pocket money or anything like that so the only way that I could really customize my look and be who I wanted to be was by making my clothes and my right. mum had no problem buying yarn for me because it kept me out of trouble so I could knit myself clothes or I could modify different clothes in different ways so, right. yeah and like make stuff for little dolls and things like so you've really. you've done it throughout your life you didn't Always. have any big gaps where you wouldn't knit anymore at uh, all oh big there's gaps. so many people who end up you know dropping it for a while and then get back into yeah, it yeah I think if there were any gaps they were maybe for a month or two right right like right that's really short it, maximum yeah I always had it around yeah. and I, and we always notice Darren in particular notices when I'm if I haven't picked up my knitting for any amount of time and I'm quite frazzled and I'm not much mm. fun to be around so yeah whenever I get like the ultimate day off for me if my if my husband or my family are gifting me anything it will be like just leave her alone with her yarn and let her just knit all day and she'll be happy so yeah so do you also have a big stash then if you've been knitting for so long no, well no not anymore I, I sort of we've we've moved every seven years so we moved from here when Indy was born to the Canadian Rockies so we got rid of everything that we owned because we were emigrating oh, right. then we lived in the Rockies for seven years so I built up a little stash there um but not I mean not huge because I'm constantly giving it away but um and then we moved on to a boat to go sail around the world and we couldn't we couldn't store yarn on the boat so I only ever had a bit that I was working with um and then the Caribbean now if you have anything that resembles a big it will get mouldy really quickly so uh no is the answer no I kind of get yeah ever. I've got my yarn is in sort of maybe two this size baskets right at home yeah and then there's now all there, of this. now there's all of this <laughs> so did yeah. that take did that actually uh play a part in deciding to open a yarn shop that you have access to everything all the time now uh, 
No, I don't think so. Yeah, I think there's so many great yarn shops in London and in this country that I could get oh, access yeah, yeah. to. When I moved here, I was never worried about not having yarn. When I lived in, in um, Virgin Gorda, we I constantly worried about not having yarn and we had to be shipped in. And so there, when I'd knit something, if I didn't know that the next bit was arriving with I have to know it was there, otherwise I'd I would knit the same skein of yarn so many times, rip it out and knit it again. Really, I I right? Yeah, happened. so you really are a process knitter. Oh, massively! It's not about the finished. N no, article. never. No, I really, I, yeah. So do you? So does that also mean if you're more into the process, does it mean that you're into really complicated things, or is it just anything as long as those needles are going? No, I need to be learning something new each time right. as well. I get bored really quickly, so I almost never make the second sock. I've got lots of one socks I quite often don't even bother with a second sleeve oh wow um, once I've sort of followed the pattern and seen how the yarn behaves and done what I need to do with that learning you know once I've learned a new brioche technique or I've learned a new marlisle technique or something then then I'll move on to the next That's thing it. quite right. quickly yeah oh wow yeah and um what about uh patterns do you always follow a pattern or do you do free form and just doing your own thing? And do, do you ever write any? Um, yeah, both. So I like to follow a pattern, but I'll usually modify it in some way or another. Not always. Sometimes patterns are completely perfect, but I'm quite a weird shape. Um, so I'll see what I can do with that. Um, and I do write stuff as well, but I've never taken it to the point where I'll write it and publish it or anything like that it's usually on sort of scraps just so that I know for myself what I've done in case I want to go back and develop that so uh does that answer that yeah yeah so, yeah. It does. Yeah, yeah it's it does. a little bit of everything I, I love learning new and I'm amazed that you know having done it for quite a long time now you know certainly not the longest that anyone's done it but it's definitely it's come, coming up to four decades um that there's still so much to learn mm. and there's the, the, I mean, Ravelry is incredible. I don't know what we did before that, but I can go on there and look up new, you know, if I can't work out what, how a pattern's made by looking at it, then I'll I'll need to make it so yeah. I can learn that new technique. Yeah. Cool. And now, of course, I can, you know, choose choose different yarns and I've, yeah. got, I've got this all, and I can see how they all behave in different scenarios. So I've got a much better understanding in the past, quite a lot of it was conceptual, and I'd read lots about the drape of this versus the elasticity of that, for example, but maybe not tested it, whereas now I get to test it. You get to test it, yeah. yeah. So do you have? Do you ever have any favourites that you oh, that you yeah. go to? I've got lots of favourites, yeah. I, I, um, I can't actually think of anything in here that I've ever knit twice, because there's... So much new so to, much get into, to get yeah. into, yeah. But I've got a lot of favourites that are in my... Like, I still can't take this home and not feel bad about it. Like, I, I you know, every time, I, if I take something off the shelf and go to knit with it, like, I have a lot of problems with that. <laughs> really? I don't, yeah, I do. I Like, I don't, I don't know what it, I have to know who's going to be receiving the final item and then I feel right. fine. And then but, it's okay. but I can't just take, take it off the shelves. But, so, yeah, um, but if I got to, like, pick anything in here that I got to take home and keep and it was gifted to me and I couldn't return it for example yeah yeah there's definitely favorites there's things like um Metallico by Blue Sky which is just like a you know I don't, I don't know there's something about it's magic that yarn it's just magic and I keep it right next to me right there by the till where I'm standing what's it like grab, so grab some yeah yeah, yeah. Grab some. I'd love to see some yeah, this is some of the colors from Metallico but when you look at this and you touch it like just feel that in your hands there's something about it Ooh. yeah and I've never found anything else that resembles it now i stand oh, next so to this every day and i still haven't managed to <laughs> really take any allow home, yourself allow to... myself to take Aww. it because it's just so be and it's so beautifully braided and i kind oh, of don't want to pull clothes. it apart because you get a good idea because it's a um it's a single ply yarn and is it is it a four ply it's a sport weight yarn a sport weight oh, all right and it but there's something really magical about this yarn. So it's, it's okay, you know how so. you get metallic -y yarns and they yes. can be a bit sort of cheesy or scratchy. Or, you yeah. know, they've usually got some synthetic component. I mean, this is metallic without any of that. And I mean, look at that. It's, it's just yeah, stunning. It's amazing. It's a stunning yarn, yeah. So that's one of my faves. I've got quite a lot of favorites. It does actually. have an incredible to sheen to it, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, and it's slubby and yeah, I don't know. It's just 
So yeah, that's a favourite, oh, but lovely. I haven't managed to take any. I have knit with it once before, but it was a gift. Um, when I lived in Canada, I bought some and made a gift for someone out of it. And right. I remember just falling in love with it and just saying, oh, one day. When I have a yarn shop, I'll definitely have this in my shop and I'll get to knit with it whenever I want to. <laughs> Here it is and I'm not knitting with it, but I might. That's Lusting I, over it every yeah, day. Yeah, it's like right there, tempting me every day. And Scout is one of my new favourites for sure. Scout? Yeah, Scout by Kilbourne Woolens. Oh, this one. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll grab a lighter colour because yeah. it, it might be easier to... Oh, this is a bit bit toothy yeah toothy. very soft toothy and soft and hard wearing but not itchy at all and something that i can throw about and it just that behaves but i made that this shawl by melanie berg out of um out of that yarn i made the um midnight in berlin and i literally wear it every day when the weather's cold that shawl and i have it on That's my lap lovely and it's gorgeous the colors yeah, are amazing yeah. kilborn is so good with colors feels yes. quite as quite a structured yarn structured. and a little bit of and a little bit. oh yes i have seen that See? but yes. look at this i mean this this completely oh. wearable gorgeous Gosh. stretchy yeah hard wearing yeah. And look at the, i mean considering i wear this every day wow. twice a day and i'm not careful with my clothes cuz i'm just not and um there's not a slob or a pill or no. anything it looks as if it was knitted yesterday right? Yeah, and I never bothered to block it, and you know this is just how it's sort of yeah, came it's off stunning. the needles, and it's gorgeous. Stunning. So I could happily make another one of those, and I've never sort of repeated oh, the, the pattern. But I would as well. Yeah. What happens to the back? See, this was a new thing for Very me. Nice. I think you know, with the whole um, the way things get come in and out of fashion with knitting, which yeah. I'd, I'd never really been aware of because I'm not in, the, I haven't been in the industry, and I've been sort of offline for so. so I haven't been. I'm like an idiot when it comes to famous designers and things. I just, <laughs> but um, this whole slip stitch and you know way of doing of combining colours instead of doing traditional colour work and holding two colours yeah. is such a cool way for um, new knitters to 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 approach colour work. It's super I think cool. It's brilliant. Yeah. I'm just discovering that you see the difference of the dominant color between those two sections. But when you turn it over on the back, it looks the same. But see, that was Amazing. just, I was just playing because this was going to be a shop sample. I right. just wanted people to be able to see, um, you know, which, which they yeah, might prefer the with the dark or the, the light. The, the actual pattern's written more like this. Right. So I just changed it part way and you can see it there. And I don't mind it at all. I actually really like yeah. having those two next yeah, to each yeah, other. Yeah, it's very yeah. nice. The girls from Kelbourne brought me a sweater that they knitted in this colorway which I'm completely in love with the mulberry yeah and I kept it on for such a long time in the day I just wanted to keep it from so I'm gonna to have to make I'm gonna to have to go back to scout and make um make that mulberry sweater do something in mulberry yeah 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 that colors it's funny how colors you know you just you keep coming back to them yeah, yeah and how important they are and how I mean I've always been aware of color but um but like really trusting your instinct mm. about which colour you need in your life at any given time. So last month or a few months ago, it was definitely orange. I needed a lot of orange for some reason. And now it's all these mulberries. So I think it's like a pre sort of Christmas. I'm um, starting to sort of ground and get ready for a little yeah, bit yeah. of a break. And it's, yeah, it's a bit more calming than those crazy oranges that I really needed to keep the energy going. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to be able to have a bit of a break over Christmas? Uh, yeah, I really need it. <laughs> I've um, managed to, I keep managing to, I always will and always have burnt myself out. Can't really, don't really know when to stop until I can't go anymore. But um, yeah, I'm good. We're going to close from, we're closed on Mondays and Tuesdays anyway. So the couple of days before Christmas will be closed and then we'll, and then we'll open for four hours on the Saturday, Saturday in the middle just to, for people that really need to, you know, get the yarn Need their fix. fix. Yeah. And just because and come here because this place is a little bit of an escape for a lot of people mm. like they love to just come in and hang out and yeah you know touch things and so that's great so they can do that on Saturday sure. I really wanted it to be um the kind of place that was very welcoming and that people felt that they could immediately come in and touch the yarn and get really involved with it like yeah. I, if I could have it my way if it wouldn't rain so much in this country I'd have it so that you took your shoes off at the door you could take your bras off or whatever and there'd be big rugs and you could come in and just get really comfy <laughs> nice, or it? maybe like we'd get somewhere where we could have like an upstairs area that is the like no ah, shoes yeah area. like the inner, inner sanctum yeah right and we could have like cushions all over the floor and Ooh. like different yarns piled up in the middle and we could all just yeah. Well, it kind of le kind of nicely leads into what I was going to ask you. 
what's next? I know you've only been going for a couple of months. Four months, months yesterday. Four months yesterday. Yeah, wow. Yesterday. Four months. Wow. I know. It's crazy. And it, feels it already long. feels like you've been around forever. Yeah, it does. It does. It does feel like a long um, time. But what's yeah. next? Uh, I, I don't really know because it's only been four months. So I, on my business plan, I hadn't planned on taking any staff yet. Not for the first six months I'd sort of built into, you know, we won't be busy enough. I won't need, but actually we've got really great staff and it's brilliant. And I and I'm think for this next little bit, I'm just going to really enjoy just giving them more responsibility mm. and letting them just really, because I say, like, Karen, who works in here is super, super talented and she's a great designer and I just would love for her to just, you know, take a lot of this and make it her own. Nuria, our teacher, is incredible. She, I don't have the patience to teach, really. Um, so Nuria comes in here and she teaches probably four or five times a week. We've got so many classes going on, so that's amazing. And she, she's just brilliant to have in here. She's, like, the warm, friendly, approachable. She's lovely. Um, and then Natasha, who's just recently joined our team, who's a really new knitter, and I'm so proud of her. Like, we pretty much taught her to knit. She hasn't wow. done anything. Um, she'd come and sat on a couple of courses, and then she just kept appearing in the shop, like, almost on a daily basis. She was like, okay, now teach me this, now teach me that. And, and now she's part of the team, and she comes and works in here, and we're, we're thinking about sort of doing something where we can share Natasha's journey a bit for, for beginner knitters mm -hmm. and how they approach all of this and where to start, you know. Yeah. So I'd really like to spend the next little bit like really getting to, to know the girls better and, and figuring out ourselves as a little team the direction that the business will go because it's, yeah. you know, I don't want it to be just me doing this. I no. want people and collaboration. And we've got like other artists that we collaborate with. Oh, I'd yeah. love to do more events, like really fun events. I'm very outside the box, so I'd love to spend time doing that. But, you know, I want to do a little trip to... India and learn about dying out there or to Finland and dying with mushrooms right, or, right, right. or let's go on some crazy Ibethan knitting and body painting thing you know like I just want to do that kind of thing right yeah right some really fun like with with the right tribe like the, the people that really just understand like it's now or never you know yeah be who you are spend time with your colors accept one another let's go yeah. have a nice time lovely yeah well, I'm hoping to come back soon to um, see how that's unfolding <laughs> and hear more about that. Maybe even come on the trip. Who knows? Yeah, come on the trip. I mean, you'd, be, you'd be so perfect for this because I love your clothes and the stuff that you do because it's uh, just uh, really representative of just be who you are, being comfortable with your body, wearing it your own way. Like, I remember when I first saw your clothes and it was like you, you'd said, you know, you have to see them once or twice. And I think it was maybe the third or fourth time that I'd seen them that I bought my first couple of pieces. But um, but I remember sort of saying, oh, you know, but I can't wear that. It wouldn't suit me in the slightest. And you were like, oh, well, yeah. you know, look at this, look at that. And I put it on and was like, oh, okay, I'm going to have to have it. But like how customizable it and it's that's like knitting right yeah. you can you can take a piece and you make it your own you can pick a different color than the design was printed in or you can shape things the way yeah. that you need to wear it the, your way and like I wear this completely differently the way you do but I still you know and it's it's that quality material knowing where it's come from it's stitched and made really really well you can feel the energy behind it and then you just do your thing but that'd be perfect for events like to teach people and to take yeah. beautiful you know everyone's got so much going on and show them how they can like really have fun with it and maximize it and have yeah, a play where so it? many people say oh this is beautiful but not for me like, yes it is for you but you have to make it yours yeah. exactly. also you know if you feel really good in it then don't worry about yeah the neighbors and what they might say you know, darren can't stand this like he hates this outfit on me he's just like oh crap but you know and you know i'm wearing it for me and he would never dare to sort of say please don't wear that you know he yeah. just knows that no, there's something that you love it yeah, yeah. I mean, but I, I like that you know that this whole moving back to this country having been in a place where you know in the caribbean where we lived we were all kind of freaks on a rock really we just were away from our families we were all a bit weird we were probably all a little bit um escaping from normal society i yeah. suppose yeah and so you could just be who you were you know if i wanted to jump up on a bar and take my top off and dance well sorry you know that's what you i felt like doing yeah. whatever but um but people are more judgmental here oh yeah and then some and in richmond you know there's quite yeah I think that a lot of people feel the prep the pressure of presenting themselves a certain way yeah. so I would love to provide like if it's not in this shop and it should be because but if it's not then let's go away somewhere where you get to do yeah. that you know and we'll put our cameras away or whatever and we'll just get 
go wild and well i'm definitely up for it yeah <laughs> fun great have you how have you got your yarns organized have you are you going by weight or um, color or how do you go yeah yes not color um def a little bit by weight and then a little bit by how they display so um we can't put balls on the on the you know pegs so the so all, all of the yarn that's in balls like the yarn tellier stuff and cowgirl blues for example are there um all of the sock yarns tend to be hanging on those hangers over there and then um, in some cases we've kept the brands together so all of the Asaya yarns for example are in this section here um, and see. that's because there was sort of a combination of of hanks and balls but it all you know merchandises quite nicely together and we find that with, with Asaya people come in and they want to mix and match and that's what it's there for so we keep that together yeah. and samples um, in the middle I see some samples in the middle yep um, and these change out fairly regularly but we've got a bunch of different samples in some of the companies will lend us some samples so we'll pop those up but we've got some that sort of live here almost on a permanent basis yeah um that everybody loves so yeah they kind of live there so um, what are we yeah. standing under as well because there's stuff hanging down oh here. yeah Look so i this. have these ideas i should put the lights on but um you know those, those ideas that you have at 3 a.m that you're like oh yeah. wouldn't it be cool <laughs> if i had an umbrella in the shop and i could have yarn hanging from it because the ceiling is such a wasted space right now so this was a 3 a.m. idea that um, fit in here just absolutely perfectly. <laughs> and it does, doesn't it's it? It's been picked a little bit clean of, of yarn. We've still got some really lovely yarns hanging from it. We normally have the fairy lights glittering away on there as well, which is perfect for this time of year. This is a new, uh, new cabinet. We ended up having to get it because I'd bought more yarn than we could put out. So <laughs> we decided to, because the window used to just be completely clear, which I, I liked, but actually we kind of needed this and now the amazing amazing electric ball winder lives there along with swift and other bits and pieces and the sock blanks so yeah this is what i've got left in sock blanks i'll get some more after christmas hopefully but they're amazing and they're a new discovery for me i've seen them for a while but i've always been a bit more oh, i don't know what to do with it well anyway look this is what i'm doing with my sock blank right now so it was underneath my sweater and I wear this underneath my coat and I think it's the most fun little pop underneath my grey coat but it's also means that I am never without my knitting so if I'm going to the bank or I'm waiting in line out there somewhere for whatever I've got this in my pocket two socks at the same time from my sock blank from and you've got that amazing surprise that only sock blanks can really give you of you just don't know how it's going to turn out um, so I've got this really fun thing and the socks look nothing like it but the colours are obviously involved and I think it's fantastic and this might be the one time where I actually like do do two socks instead of yeah. just one and get bored yeah it's really Ooh, super look at that. so you haven't got balls of yarn that no. are going under the car seat or if you're on the plate you know what it's yeah. like balls. Yeah. and then when you're doing doubles you haven't got two balls of yarn that you're constantly having to untangle they've just got there's two two threads together in this and it just and you know zips as you go and it's wow. just and you get to wear it i mean this is such a beautiful like garment in itself so iron room, the this is the iron room yarn we've got it in two different weights but this one for example i don't know which one will show up best on your screen um but they are um icelandic wool which is like magic um but they sh but she's taken christina's taken the icelandic wool and wrapped it with thai silk and wrapped in the opposite direction. Ooh. So Iron Room are um, architects. Uh, it's funny how like a lot of people that were in yarn are engineers or architects, but she's got, like, you know, her real passion is yarn. And so she's created this incredible Icelandic yarn that's just as warm as the normal Icelandic, you know, how it's just like the most crazy warm stuff. Um, but, but softer and more luxurious because of this amazing um, Thai silk that's been wrapped around it. So it's its properties for being antibacterial and temperature regulating and all that stuff is is really really good because uh, enhanced actually by the by the silk mm. so uh, this is in the lighter weight um the e range and so just really i mean i think these will out outlive us to be honest like they're just sort of heirloom quality yarn and then the real thick stuff they've just released four new colors so we've just got all of those in and with the whole um sort of itchy factor with with icelandic 
um, Christine, when I first met Christina, and I was like, oh, I love it, but you know, it'll probably be a bit itchy for me. It will irritate me. And she was like, nine minutes, and I can guarantee you won't feel it anymore. And I was like, oh, we'll see. Yeah. So I put it on, and she's absolutely right. And even with little children, we'll put something on them that's made of this yarn in nine minutes. They can, it's like once it's body temperature, they don't feel it anymore. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I've got that with the. Um, I've got uh, Mooka yarn, which is uh, spun in Romania, and it's made with, you know, traditional Romanian sheep breed. Right. Tigaya, it's called, and there's some Mooka uh, Merino as well, uh, Romanian Merino. And that's got the same properties. Yeah. I've got um, uh, a jumper made out of the of, uh, out of the Tigaya sheep yarn, and same thing. I thought, well, I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about it, and I've worn it in all kinds of temperatures. Yeah. And people say, how do you exist in that it's like yeah well a normal in a normal jumper i wouldn't no exactly but this i can just keep wearing and the way that like out here when it's drizzly you, it just it's like water off a duck's back it just yeah. doesn't doesn't seem yeah. to matter i read this fascinating article about how um the wetter it gets with icelandic yarn the warmer it is it's almost like a wetsuit so if you oh. were out and you were caught in a proper monsoon downpour you actually would you still would be fine you wouldn't wow. get cold book, we sell that? so many copies of this book first book by Iron and because the patterns in here are stunning and lots of people have picked these up and come back and shown us what they've made from this book but it's fantastic. just a fantastic book yeah and these are the sock yarns on this side yeah so this tends to be um kind of a, a lot of it sock or shawl yarn a lot of fingering weight yarns here right and our indie dyed stuff is usually displayed from here so we've got a little bit of space now we're expecting another couple of deliveries for some more of the lovely indie dyed stuff um but i really this was another one of those crazy nighttime ideas where i just really wanted to be able to display yarn on a hanger like this so that you could actually pull out um a hanger of yarn and take it to the window or under a light and 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 see the choices yeah, but yeah. I love being able to sort of stand at one end of this and see the cascade of colours and, and find yeah. in there you know the colour that I'm looking for so yeah, it's great. I've just got this in from Ribbon It's so this is what I'm making my you know those mittens yes the ones that I've yeah, I've got them in my bag so I'm making those the, the how cold is it mittens <laughs> with um with this brand new yarn from Ribbon It's and I'm a big Ribbon It's fan I, I love them I love Ribbon It's I love the way they dye I just think that everything that they do is phenomenal but this when they told me the story behind this stuff so they found it's it's from a single farm it's Jacob's sheep um in Worcestershire um, all from a, an old single farm and then they go and they have it all and it's exclusive to Rivenets. They get these fleeces milled at a little tiny mill in North Wales. That's They've it. taken a really old traditional product like this Jacob that normally you'd see in sort of these colours. Yeah. And and created like these really fun modern, Super modern yeah. pop colours like this. Like wow. I you know, like I would I'd love to combine say that one that's undyed with a little pop yeah. of that or something yeah. yeah but a customer told me that instead of having nylon because i'm not a big fan of synthetics but i understand in socks you know that there might be a place for it but she's using silk mohair held together for the heels um the heel section of her socks to give the heels that strength that nylon might have really? and it's so good it works so well never heard of and that and so warm i know i have what a either. good idea and you just don't need a lot like a skein of silk mohair has got i mean this one's got 420 meters on it's 50 grams and you only need a little bit for the yeah, heel of each sock of you can just keep it forever and ever so yeah wow. instead of nylon I think it's such a good, very good yeah, idea. I, I love yeah. that tip. Yeah. So that's the little crochet bits and the scissors, and then over here we've got lots of knitting needles and bags and bits and pieces. Quite a lot to look at. I love these pom pom makers. They're incredible. They look and feel really good, but they make the best pom poms. And these incredible bags by, like, there's just. I think yeah. I have more. I have. There's a lot more that I want to put in here than I probably have capacity to display. So it's all mm. there somewhere. Right, so in here we've got the book nook. So lots of um, loose patterns and loads and loads of books in that area. Yeah. So you people just sort of come in here and spend a bit of time browsing. Um, and then we've got the table that's usually got lots of people sat at it. We have our classes and things at this table. Most of the classes, if they're really big ones, then they're in front. But most of the Shibui stuff lives here. Again, it's one of those things that are good. They're good mixed and matched and blended together. So we, we like to sort of keep them together. And then down here we've got more cottons and linens, and cottons and linens over there, 
um, just a little bit of garment display. And oh, in here we've got stuff that I have to keep a little bit locked up. We've got the amazing Ooh. sterling silver it's collection in the top silver, there. Silver, yeah. Yeah, they are amazing. Re I mean, if you haven't picked them up and worked with them, Roberts, right? Yeah, yeah, really special. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I we've got some silver. Of her stuff. I'm an avid fan. Yeah, oh, it's I think wonderful. it's fantastic. It's so it really good. Is Rolls Royce. It is. Yeah, it's it's the real deal. Yeah. Uh, and then just kits and th those soaps are incredible. Laundry balls and that is our Royal Alpaca. Um, I'll give you one of those to hold in a minute. It's, alp it's Alpaca Royal. Um, and when I was inquiring about that yarn, I'd come across it quite a while ago, but I really, really want, it's it's really special. And it's what the British Royal Family, ha their hand knitter uses it to make the knits for the Royal Babies. Really? It's, and yeah, when you pick it up and hold it, you'll understand why it's, huh? like it's... Wow. Yeah, it's, it's one of those ones that you just want to sort of pet <laughs> before you do anything else with it. Uh, and then back here, we've got our really lovely chunky. So we've got lots wow. of Mrs. Moon there. We've got some... Baram U, and then um, these beautiful um, yarns by Manos over here, the hand painted stuff. And up here, we've got the specialist Paoli yarns from India, so they're incredible. Hand spun, hand dyed, naturally dyed yarns, and I think that's possibly about it. Wow. Yeah. There we are. Oh, we well, didn't cover the wine rack. The and wine then we've rack. got oh. the wine rack, yeah. The wine rack's another little idea of mine that my husband would say would never work, but here it is. It works really, really well. So we've got Mrs. Moon pudding in there. We've got some kits at the top. We've got these amazing, uh, I don't know what we call them, sausage balls. Oh, yeah. I don't know how, well, I don't know what they're called, but they're lovely. So German Town by Kilbourne there, and then some Erica Knight Gossipium cotton and some wine and champagne because we've usually got at least a bottle open from <laughs> sort of Friday uh, afternoon onwards so yeah cool <laughs> yeah and when's your knit night knit night is every other thursday um from 8 till ten thirty. by design i want it to be like an adult time when you can put all your stuff aside and come and have a glass of wine and some cake with us and um yeah and it's just a drop in you know no booking or anything Lovely. and our classes are, are great so one of the really cool sh things about this shop is it's um super colorful and and um it, it's inviting I suppose to beginners it's it's not one of those shops where you feel like you have to be an expert to go in there or or, or you're not welcome you know everyone's welcome in here so we get a lot of beginners um, we run a lot of beginner courses here at the table and then they come back again and again for the next course and they're starting to sort of form their little cool groups of yeah. people that just sort of knit together but we have the best conversations around this table you know so we'll we have the my, my group of ladies that just did the course for learning to knit a top down sweater then those moments where you like sort of pinch yourself and you go oh this is exactly how i'd hoped it would be you know Fantastic. where we just get to just talk about anything and yeah this last week my teenage son was in here overhearing a lot of the stuff that was being said and it was just he sort of look up at me every so often and go Ooh. and i'd be like it's all right <laughs> You need to know this stuff. Yes. <laughs> well, it's been fantastic uh, coming to see you and you. seeing the shop. And thank you very much for um, sharing your story with us. Pleasure. And uh, I'll hope to be back soon. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. I'm starting off with a pair of high-low trousers that I've got all the way down. These are the long length ones, which are good on people of five foot six and over. Uh, they just reach about, just reach, just about reach my ankles uh, when I'm wearing them full length like this. And then whatever shoes or boots you are wearing underneath this, the noses pop out and you don't see that much of them. So that's version one. And I'm wearing them with a tail smock, a red cross weave tail smock, and just a long sleeve t-shirt that I had at home which is uh, quite fitted and quite long line, so I can pull it down and pull it over my tummy so it ends up looking quite nice. The next thing I'm going to do is pull up the trousers by catching them with the, uh, the little cords that are on the inside and making them shorter into bloomers so that I can show off my boots more and create a different silhouette. There we are, leg number two. Fold the fabric in. Nice bloomer effect, as you can see, I hope. 
outfit number one. Number two, still sticking with the short top effect. I've put a mini tabard over the top of that long t-shirt. Look, I keep the t-shirt over the top of my trousers. It comes down to just about the start of the upper pockets, as you can see, and down on my bum and then put a mini tabard over the top. But I wanted to show you, especially in this example, that has as, as long as you stay within that color palette, if you have clashing type of stripes or contrasting stripes, you can create a really nice outfit, a really nice silhouette, make, keeping it very simple in terms of color presentation. If it all feels a little bit samey, you can add a little bit of contrast. For example, like this, putting it on a bit more dressy. This is uh, the Jagger shawl made with 100 grams of linen yarn in the gradient, one of the gradient sets. Just using one color after the other rather than playing around with them going from dark to light and back again. This is just from dark to light across like that. It's kind of got three points. And draping it around your shoulders like that looks a bit more dressy and a bit festive. But for more of an everyday look, you can go for something like this, just tie it around your neck. This thing is so long, you can tie it around a couple of times and create a bit more of an everyday look. A bit less dressy. But still, by adding that flash of color to the whole outfit, it lifts it a little bit, or you can make this a color that you really enjoy wearing close to your face, trying to match the your eye color, for example. Ooh. Now on top of that, I could put the tail smock back on. Taking the tail smock, whipping the tail over my head, and then kind of aligning it with the mini tabard underneath so that it sits nicely on my shoulders. What you get then is the mini tabard sticking out underneath the front of the tail smock. So if you're not wearing anything long to cover this part of your body and you've got a shorter top on or something, I'll just hide it in my trousers here, something that you would like to tuck in because it's shorter or it's flared or the length of it just doesn't complement your outfit, then you can very effectively use a mini tabard again as a layer to create a bit of a coverage here at the area of your tummy if you want it and create that contrast again between the trousers and then the mini tabard and then the tail smock and have a very effective outfit that way so this is already now three different outfits with the tail smock and the trousers the mini tabard and the trousers or all three together and that's the idea behind layer cake that you can build up with the different garments different looks and different kind of outfits you can then start playing by changing the trousers into leggings for example or a skirt or you could put uh, a long smock, a longer smock or a tabard underneath it for another layer underneath what I've got here already. Next thing I'd like to show you is to layer two tail tabards, tails, tail tabard, tail smocks. If I put this red one inside out and I put the charcoal gray one or any other color pretty much, depending on what the colors in your outfit are. Over the top, it's like creating a lined version. So I've got the outside of the red one facing inwards. So it virtually works like a lining of the gray one. Again, I'll work myself into this on camera so you can see the best way to put one of these on. You have to whip the tail over your head and then the weight of it will help you get things into place. 
So I now have the three layers. This is one of the reasons that we don't work with super heavy linen. The linen is spun and woven in a way that it's very heavy wearing, hard wearing, but it is not too thick. If we work with a thicker linen, it becomes far too warm. I did some tests wearing a linen that was only 50 grams per square meter heavier than the linen that we were that we are using now. And it was unbelievable. I couldn't layer it. It was too warm and too heavy. This is just perfect. So here we are again with the, the flashing of the color. Is this a very muted palette? Obviously go for the black trousers, the pinstripe mini tabard and the charcoal gray tail smock but then with the red cross weave tail smock inside out on the inside of the charcoal one for some flashes of color. Of course you can turn this around as well and wear the charcoal on the inside and the red on the outside. It all depends on how colorful you want to make it. And then you can bring back the scarf again with the red and the black in it that picks up on the red of the inside of the tail smock. So that's the total look. Very simple, very effective and very fun. And in this case, already four different layer cake items that you can wear together. And I assure you, unless you're doing it in the middle of summer when it's really warm, this is lovely for three seasons. If you don't like the idea of a fitted t-shirt, or fitted any type of shirt underneath your layer cakes, then of course you can go for a wider shirt. This is just a plain white shirt, long, long line men's shirt. I really like those. And what I do is after I wash them and they come out of the washing machine very crinkled, I try to crinkle them as much as possible and then hang them up to dry, crinkled and all. I love that look. And they get this kind of parchment idea rather than ironing it and then still ending up a little bit crinkled in the course of the day. Look number one, you get the lines of the mini tabard and the lines of the V-shape of the shirt following each other. In this case still with the high-low trousers, high-low bloomers. If this were a straight shirt, it could look just as effective just with a little edge peeping out. It doesn't have to be that long as what I have. It can just be straight or slightly shaped and it would look really nice. But the nicest bit is if you see a little bit of the shirt peeping out, even if it's just on the side underneath the mini tabard. It's a very effective form of layering. And again, very simple and very easy to achieve. I'll go for the double effect again. In this case, tie it inside the blouse so it's more like a choker almost, like this. Looking a bit more businesslike, add a statement neck necklace or anything like that. It'll be a great look for every day and uh, a very easy thing to dress up purely by taking the scarf out and instead of having it tucked in and wrapped around your neck you drape it over your shoulders and all of a sudden by just doing that you get a bit more of a dressy idea. No time to change between day and night, just do this and the whole outfit ends up being more dressy. A couple of long earrings, for example, would be good with this. Change your boots into heels or something strappy if you've got it. And ends up being a, a, a great evening outfit. If you want a little bit more formal, because this of course is very informal, having your shirt hanging out, you can just tuck the shirt in. I'll just do it in the front. Mind you, I'll just do the whole thing. It's easy enough with the elastic. And because the mini tabards go down ever so slightly, 
beyond your waist, they hang down to just below your waist. So they very effectively hide the elastic of the high lows. So by doing this, back to the previous point of dressing this up, there we go. The shirt is gone. Bit more dressy without changing anything other than rearranging the scarf and your shirt. Like I said, maybe changing your shoes, maybe changing a bit of makeup or a brighter lipstick, some earrings, and you've dressed up the whole outfit. Let's see what we can add to this. Bit festive, still really relaxed. Mini tabard to hype the tummy. Tail smock over the top. You get the real playfulness. I love that with the print pinstripe. Really playing with how it's normally used as quite a formal fabric. And this is using it in a very informal way. But by using it with such classic colours, it somehow kind of gives a wink to its former life in a gentleman's suits. And here we are with a completely new life and a completely new look really quirky and giving it a very different twist. Just wanted to show this without the mini tabard as well. In my, my case, I would always take the shirt back out and wear it with the shirt over the top of the trousers, like this. It doesn't have, it doesn't need a mini tabard underneath. I don't want you to think that you can only wear tail smocks in combination with the mini tabards like I showed with the uh, t-shirt but with the shirt as well it's really effective just like this. It's possible to play with different fabrics and different colors as well. I was keeping everything in a very neutral palette but you can easily take things in a completely different direction. Here I'm putting on the green tweed tabard, which we've got in the sale at the moment. Just go to the sales section on the website and you'll be able to find it. I'll link it down below. Tabard in green tweed with the uh, white shirt and the uh, high-low bloomers. Add to that the mini tabard in this black and white stripe, the pin stripe. Would you have thought of that if you've got something like that in your wardrobe? You may already have a tabard and a mini tabard from a very different color palette. They look fantastic together. Linen tabard over the top. Again, it doesn't add a lot of heat, but it just adds a different color. And then you can pick up a color from here and add that in a, a, a scarf or a shawl or anything like that. Grab one of the Albus ponchos, 100% merino. So they pick up on the green in the tabard. And the points in the outfit. Just throw this over the top, ready to go. With the kind of weather that we have here in the south of England, even over Christmas, when you are visiting friends or family it often isn't necessary between the car and the, or the train and the uh, house, bus and the house to put on lots of layers or a win warm winter coat. Something like this may be enough and then a scarf and you're done, you're set. A pair of fingerless gloves if it's very chilly. Outfit ready. Adding an extra color. And any of our colors really will do. This tabard could have been the teal cross weave, for example. 
or the blue cross weave. I'm just doing it like this because I'm already wearing it. Tail smock over the top, done. Actually, with this, might be a nice combination to show you now. The shawl that I have here is called the Seriously Holy. It's a Stephen West pattern. And what I've done is it's been knitted here by Megan, one of my fabulous test knitters, sample knitters, I should say, in a combination of Soliloquy Alpaca Boo in the color Orion and as a contrast color that is Fiberspace Cumulus. So this is the size, the side where Cumulus is dominant and you see the Orion in the background and when you turn it around you get Orion in the front and sea green in the background. It's another beautiful example of taking one of Stephen's patterns and knitting it in a yarn that is finer than a regular four ply. As you might already know, Soliloquy, Merino Silk and Alpaca Boo, which are interchangeable virtually, are 600 meters per 100 grams and so is Cumulus. Cumulus is uh, a slightly less wispy but still really fuzzy alternative to yarns like Kid Silk, Kid Silk Haze and other uh, silk and mohair blends, making it a bit less wispy, uh, turns it into yarn that is a lot easier to for knitters who may maybe not have as much experience working with different bases, and they may enjoy this base a lot more to work with. It's easier to handle and easier to manage. When you take a pattern like this and you knit it in a finer yarn on slightly finer needles, and I've listed on the website exactly what needle size you use, and I've got some examples up of nice kits for the shawl, the pattern you'll still buy from Stephen, then the whole shawl shrinks down a little bit. A finer yarn, slightly finer needles, but because his shawls are always so large, this is still you know, at least a six foot diameter, so it's still plenty big. It's super soft, it's super light. I'll list the quantities of yarn that you use and the kit price down below. I've got some available at the moment. It introduces another new color to this palette, but it goes really well. And if this is too much contrast for you, then I'll show you an outfit that is a little bit more in the direction of these colors. So it becomes a bit more tonal again. One of my beloved play suits in the teal cross weave with the shirt that I was already wearing and then bringing in the very muted alpaca boo and cumulus combination wearing it over my shoulders to really show it off at the moment gosh this thing is lovely and warm but you can then we start draping it if you don't want to have it hanging around you like a big flag. A lot of people still associate these kind of shapes with old fashioned shawls, but it's all about how you wear them and what you wear them with. This is a great way to frame a play suit 
having the play suit like that and then having the shawl tied a little bit higher up around your shoulders, just around the top. Or, or of course you can go all the way. Make it a lot warmer still. Have that point in the front. Tie it. As you all know, one of my favorite ways of tying one of these because it brings it up nice and warm around your neck and it still shows off enough of the stitches and the colors. Now I can start layering again with other garments. For example, the mini tabard. As a tip, for those of you who have no, never thought of it, when you try on these kind of things and you're wearing lipstick like I am, all I do is curl my lips into my mouth when I put the clothes on or take them off. Stops you from ever smudging your clothes with lipstick. Bringing a bit of the color from the bottom of the play suit, which now looks like a pair of trousers, bringing that back into the scarf. Of course, you can go with brighter colors if you like that, but again, it gives you an idea of how you can bring a whole outfit together by working with color families. Gray tail, tail smock over the top of the mini tabard. But because the, the uh, play suit is so loose around your waist and around your hips, you don't actually need the mini tabard unless you want it for a color, a ping of color or a, a textured effect like what we had with the pinstripe. But like this, just a play suit and a tail smock. Very nice effective outfit. Can then start making it longer again, the look. Showing off little, the little sides, the little uh, extra accents, but wearing it as a longer tight scarf. Muted, more muted than the bottom. Of course, you can go the other way very easily by grabbing some brighter colors. This is one of the gradient uh, kits in the linen, 100 grams, going from the blue to the green, which are the colors that this play suit is woven out of. Never mind the tag in the back that just tells you what it's made out of, which we use at the shows. Putting it around my shoulders like this spreads out the color a little bit. As you can see, see as much of that contrast as possible and really tying the bottom of the outfit together with it. But we can also go up again. I'll show you, you can just put the back of like the point of a scarf down the back of a shawl and then effectively turn the whole thing into a scarf. So the point of the shawl ends up hanging down your back on the inside of the shirt. And then you tie this. And then it just looks like you've got a little scarf on. So it doesn't end up looking like as much of a big production. Just little scarfy, little necktie, rather than something bigger and bulkier. And of course, with the linen, because it is so thin and knitted on a big needle, it can be scrunched up very easily. This linen is hard when you first knit it, and as you knit it, it already softens. And then the more you expose it to heat and water, the softer it gets. Bringing the mini tabard back into the picture and into the look.
very easy way to tie the outfit together. And these kits, they're 14 pounds for either this shawl or the Jaga, the one with the red and black that I showed you. Both shawls only take 100 grams of yarn and they're very easy as a little project. You can see how simple this knitting is. It looks complicated because it is uh, so holy and so open, but it's literally just stocking stitch and little eyelets combined very effectively. So you can knit in front of the TV. Same with the Jaga. The Jaga is just garter stitch and increasing or decreasing at one side at a time. So easy to do and a very effective way when you choose a layer cake in a teal or a red or a blue and black, for example, those cross weaves, grabbing one of the kits that uses the same colors as there are in the cross weaves of the fabric, then gives you an opportunity to knit a little project to do just what I did and tying the bottom of an outfit or, for example, the smock, tying it together with a scarf in the same colors. Showing a bit more color again, especially if you're in the mood or for a party or this festive season. Colors that you normally wouldn't wear together necessarily because they remind you too much of Christmas, for example. You could wear together on purpose to create a contrast and create a more festive look. Relaxed and easy going on the one hand, but by injecting some color, making a very effective outfit. Then I layer everything. I layer socks, I layer trousers, I layer shawls. So taking these two completely different color schemes, completely different shapes, lining them up like this, I've just taken the middle of this one, lined it up with the middle of the fairly, and then playing with them round your neck. And of course, all of these colors are in my outfit. Having both of them together, you saw me just line them up, tying them together. All the colors are in there. Ignore the tab. Bringing both the green and the blue, the red and the black together that are in the rest of the outfit. Ta da It's good, isn't it? Very effective, very easy, and extremely versatile.